So in the last video we've set up quests, uh, now let's set up the dialogue system uh, and I'll briefly explain how the dialogue editor works. So first let's create a new cube which we'll use for our NPC that will trigger the dialogue and on here we'll add the dialogue oh, um, owner and as you see the dialogue field is required um, and we can create one straight away by clicking the create new dialog. And save it. And this will open the dialog editor. And as you can see we always begin with a single note. This is called the entry note. This is the start of your dialog conversation. And on the side here you'll see that we have a um, dialog picker or a note picker. Here we can choose which notes we would like to add to the dialog and you can also click the open sidebar at the top here in case the window is not visible. So let's say we want to add a normal general note and now we can connect the two with a line. This is called the note no matter what's inside of this it's always called a note and the line between is called an edge. Now how can we use this? If I write a short um, message here, so let's say something like this. This is something the dialogue owner, so the NPC, will tell us. Now if I actually select the dialogue, as you can see it's selected blue right now, I can see in the right side we have extra properties. So we have the owner type, which is um, the owner of this specific node. So let's say it belongs to the player, it shows up green, so all green nodes belong to the player, something the player says, and if they're bluish, grayish, they belong to the NPC. Autofocus can be used, but we'll get to, into this in the next tutorial, so for now you can just uh, forget this for a moment. The message is just the same as we have here, and then we have audio info and motion info, so maybe we want to um, uh, play a bit of audio or voice acting when the NPC is, um, when this note is being executed, or maybe we want to show an animation while it's doing so. If the owner type is set to player, it will play the audio clip and animation on the player, and if it's set to dialogue owner, it will set play it on the dialogue owner, so the NPC. So next we need to add the dialogue UI, which is the UI and visuals uh, that will be used to display the dialogue. So we can actually use the existing one, which we can find under designs, and then RPG style, and then we'll see the window UI prefabs, window prefabs, and in here we have the dialogue prefab. And next we actually have to assign it to our dialogue manager. If you don't already have the manager, make sure you add the manager, the dialogue manager. And here we can reference our dialogue. So that's it. Let's uh, try it out. Camera back. and click it and as you can see it shows up. Now it's not actually showing any text yet and that's because we haven't set our UI prefabs in the settings database. So we can actually do this right now. Okay. Um, in our managers we have the settings database that we previously created and in here you can see that the UI prefabs are still empty. So these are used to show the individual nodes so there's different types of nodes, for example, the player decision, where the player has to actually choose a decision, um, which uses a different UI prefab, so you can actually configure them individually. And again, we have those right here. So in our designs RPG style, we have node UI prefabs, and we have the default, we have the player decision, and we have player input. And that's it. So let's try it out. Click it, and it's actually showing the text right here. And we can go next, and it automatically closes it. Now you can actually directly use the note editor. Let's see, at runtime. So I'm just gonna make this a bit smaller. You can see that when I click it, it highlights, and it immediately, so you have a visual debugger 
um, they can use at runtime. And you can also edit them at runtime. And as you can see, the whole thing works fine. Now we can actually use the node editor in a couple of other ways. As you can see on the first node, this one, that we can actually create multiple outgoing lines. And that is because if we duplicate this one, you can see that we now have two outgoing lines from this node. The quest system or the dialogue editor will always start from left to right, so we'll first try this node. If it can't reach this node, it will try this node and the next one and the next one and so forth. So to avoid it reaching this node, we can actually add restrictions on the edges, so the lines between them. So if you select one, it highlights yellow, and on the right you can actually click the Add Type button and add certain restrictions. For example, um, Task Status. So as you can see, a little window pops up, and it says Has Active, and then we can say I want to have a task or a quest and the task main has to be active. So we can only see this node if we have an active task called main on this quest. If we don't, it will try the next node, which is the one on the right. So let's just give it a bit of uh, text here. So And see what it looks like. And as you can see, it automatically turns red. It means we don't actually have this condition, so we don't actually have that active task. If I now accept the quest, you can see it turns green, and we can actually go to the left node. If I, however, cancel this quest, you can see it becomes red again, and if I try to, it'll go to the right node. So this way you can map out entire conversations, add restrictions between them, and you can visually directly see what is happening um, and how your quest can actually play out, or your entire dialogues. That's it for this tutorial. In the next one, I'll go over uh, custom notes, custom editors, and how we can use those.